Morning, everyone. Today we read the book of Hebrews, chapter thirteen. So Paul was going to give some final reminders for the Jewish Christians back then, and since they were Jews, they were very familiar with Judaism, with the laws and the rules. They started keeping the law since they were young. And so they had a lot of knowledge, and they were all religious people, very passionate. And so God reminded them, "Let brotherly love continue. That's the most important thing." In the past, the outward religious activities. Were superficial, but Paul was reminding them: most important is something inward from our hearts. Love, a brotherly love, is more important than the outward behaviors. So, don't make our faith become like a religious outfit. We just focus on the doing. Then that would be a religion, and that's meaningless. So last week, Simo preached about the message that God loves mercy, and He does not desire sacrifice. The religious acts cannot really please God. God is pleased when we love Him from our hearts, just like you can tell. If others are good to you from their hearts or not, if they are just pretending to be nice to you, then you also won't really appreciate from your heart. If they are just、um, flattering you, not from their hearts, is meaningless. Their words are just empty. If you can see that is contrary to their hearts, no matter how how well. They can do it. You think it's not good, so the heart is very important. That's why Paul was reminding them, encouraging them. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers.、Uh, it didn't refer to any random strangers, but the brothers and sisters in Christ. They are, they were believers. They may travel from place to place, and when the book of Hebrews was written, there were not a lot of lot of hotels and motels. So the travelers they had a lot of needs. So for those travelers, believers, Paul said, you need. To entertain them from your heart, not by force. So should help each other in love from the heart to be hospitable, hospitable to them. And the travelers, the strangers may be going from place to place to strengthen new churches. Some maybe from the Pauline team sent out to strengthen other churches. So for those ministers, must receive them by love. And Paul said, by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Can be real angels. Or servants of God, who bring along with them some spiritual benefits to the church. So Paul was telling the church, "Don't just take care of your own. Also have fellowship with other churches, and if there's a need from others, then help them." And that's a lively church.
and don't lose your love. In when time passes by, sometimes a ministry is like that. We start out with love and enthusiasm, but in the end, we may lose the passion, and it just becomes a responsible. Responsibility, a tradition that I have this work, so I have to do it. Just imagine, I receive you, and then I tidy up the room, and then I'm actually grumbling in my heart. Then that's not a nice picture anymore. So the Book of Hebrews reminds us to keep the brotherly love. And verse three: Remember the prisoners as if chained with them; those who were mis mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. We should remember those who are in chain. They they are chained because of the gospel. In Hong Kong, we may not see that. But quite often we receive some newsletters, some news from other places. People are persecuted because of the gospel. So we need to pray for them, to take care of them, and help them if possible, because they suffer for the sake of the Lord. So we need to think of, think about them as if. We also are mistreated. We need to understand them, remember them. Just like they are, just the same like us. If the same thing happened to you, what would you do? How would you feel? So we need to be empathetic, understand others. Then we can pray for others from our hearts. Otherwise, our our prayers are just empty. Since coming to six one one, I have a stronger feeling about this. I came also from a traditional church when I was the MC or、um, the the、um, when leading. I will write down my prayer script, but that will be meaningless without any feeling from the heart. And I went to, I used to visit in the hospital, and I felt that I was so fake because I didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit, couldn't really comfort them. Just went to visit them and. Encourage them, and what did I pray?、Um, it's like, oh Lord, we know that you are mighty God, your power is beyond the heavens. So, if this is your will, may your will be done. So, does that mean we got healed that person or not? Not sure. Just、um, pray out a lot of spiritual jargons, but it's they are empty. If I were the patient, I may ask, "Do you think that I will be healed?" Actually, no one knows, because in the end, we pray that, "Oh, may Your will be done, Lord." Which means, if you are healed or not, it's the will of God. So it doesn't matter what I pray.、And、those were like empty words, without faith and love. But here it says we need to be empathetic to understand others' needs. Then our prayer can touch others' hearts. It's the same as discipleship. We need to understand others' situation. If you were him, how would you feel? That's very important. Otherwise, it's very easy for us to judge others. It's easy for us to stand on the tree,、uh, under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil.
So um, if the same thing happened to us, we may cry out to God and say, "God, you don't care about me." So it's like we have two rulers, one standard for ourselves, one standard for the others, and it's not good. Here it says in the book of Hebrews, we are all human beings. We have this similar temper. So we need to understand others' feelings and to remember those who are suffering, especially those who are bound by the gospel. Then it's a true faith with love, and verse four says marriage is honorable among all, and the bad the undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. It was talking about those suffering because of the gospel. I would suddenly jump to marriage. Actually, if you can stand in, put yourself in another person's shoes, you will respect marriage. You don't want your spouse to be unfaithful to you, so you should also be faithful to your spouse, and so we should keep the marriage covenant. And respect it, and we know that the bed should not be defiled, because God will judge the idolaters. We don't want this to happen in our own family, and so don't bring this to other families. Everyone should have the same heart. Don't give to others what you don't want yourself, and everyone keep his or her possession. And always keep the love in their hearts. Then the church will be a lively church, holy and pleasing to God. And we should be far away from adultery, because God hates that. In the end, the、um, the adultery breaks relationships and covenants. If we break others' families like that. Or destroy the covenant. God is not pleased with that. God wants us to have long-lasting relationship. He wants us to keep the covenant forever. Unless there's a special reason, we should keep the relationship, and God will bless us. So don't destroy these things. Don't be idolatrous. To destroy the marriage. Verse five: Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." So we may boldly say, "The Lord is my helper; I will not fear. What can man do to me?" It seems it's hard to put verse five to six together, but as we meditate deeper, you can see that. Verse five and six are full of wisdom. It says, "Do not be greedy. Do not be covet others' money. Do not overvalue money. What is greed is that you overvalue it. You want it too much. Can be greedy for wealth or greedy for lust." And it becomes controlling. It controls you, and it's greed. So he says, "Do not be greedy. Do not magnify wealth." And also refers to contentment. If you're greedy, you are.、Uh, you have a lot of things, but you're still. Not content. Maybe the wealthier people they're more greedy because they always think that's not enough. They think that, oh, if I have one million, I should have two million, and or、oh, I should have one billion. It's not about how much he has, but how much he values it. And no matter how much, it's not satisfying for that person. So greedy is you always think it's not enough. So it says, do not. Magnify wealth and money. Be content with what you have.
Otherwise, if you're always unsatisfied, then the greed will come out from you. And how can we be content with what we have? The only way is to return to God, because it says, "I will never leave you, nor forsake you." So we may boldly say, "The Lord is my helper; I will not fear." What can man do to me? So, what's the relationship between here and the former face? Should be content with what we have, because God will never leave us or forsake us. So we can be content. We are greedy because we have fear. The root of greed is fear. Why should I? Be greedy because I have fear. I do not have security inside. So, the people want to accumulate more because of fear. The greater the fear, the more they want. If you have security. If we have twenty dollars in your pocket, then there's enough. Um, I think I have security in this area. I remember my wife always says, "Your purse is always empty. You only have like twenty Hong Kong dollars." And I say, "Yeah." I have been serving already. Actually, in six one one, I I became bankrupt before I joined the ministry, so I don't have any credit card, and so I only have twenty dollars bills or octopus card in my uh in my in my purse. And so my when my wife asked me, how can you just go out with twenty dollars in your Purse, I say, no, no problem. I I just live so close to the church. I walk to the church. If I have more money, then we can eat more. If not, just something simple. Otherwise, I just fast. It's fine. Why do I need so much money in my purse? And especially,、um, you have you have the money, and you can always go to the ATM machine. If I need, I will come to you. So that's an attitude. And when Pastor Joshua sent me out to Kyrgyzstan or Uzbekistan, I didn't have any money. Oh, um, I didn't have much money. I just went to the airport, and then Pastor Joshua, how how can you leave like that? So let so few money, and then he gave me some money. He said, if anything happens, you have some money. Um. Because you're going alone, so I realized that oh, thank God,、uh, my security、um, is in God. The bondage of money has left me. I experience God saving me from the edge of death, so I have nothing else to fear. So here it says, God, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If God helps me, I should not fear. God is our greatest support and shield. What can man do to me? Man cannot do anything to me because behind us, we have a great Helper. What should I fear? I should not need to grab onto money to be my security, because the money also comes from our Helper behind us, from our God. So it's actually a life. Of a wealthy person, do you think that if、uh, today Li Gaxing would go out, would he bring a lot of money with him? I don't think so. People recognize him, and yeah, and everything is fine. If we're the son of Li Gaxing, we also don't need to be worried. If everyone knows that you are his son, everyone can just lend you money, no problem. If you don't have money with you, we have such a great God behind us. So why should we be worried? 
God can pay everything. He creates the heaven and earth. The gold and silver belongs to Him, and the calves on the pillars are His. So we don't need to have money as our security. We are behind greed as our insecurity. So we don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be greedy for money. We need to know that God is our help, and don't need to fear. So may this be our anchor in our hearts, so we won't be greedy for money. It doesn't mean that money is not important. Money is important, so we need to have wisdom to manage our wealth, so we can live a comfortable life. But we don't need to rely on money too much. If we are too greedy. That money becomes mammon, becomes our idols. So we need to have a balanced life. Paul was reminding the readers here: we need to deal with our hearts and know that who do we believe? Who is our security? My wife used to put her security. In her bank book, note bank book. That's why she decided to be, join the civil servants, join to work in the government after she graduated. Because at that time, those who retire will receive long-term pension. So she calculated by the time she retired, she would be serving the government for forty years. And after retirement, she can have a very, very good pension, and she can receive an income until she passes away. So, according to her formula,、uh, she can retire after ten, fifteen years, and she can travel around the world. So she put her security in money. So she like to count money and count how many, how much savings she has. But after she got renewed by the Holy Spirit, she laid down all this and served God. And she also finds that her greatest help and security is not her pension. And back then, she could serve. She could lay down all this because God spoke to him.、Uh, God spoke to her, and she couldn't really sleep. She was actually calculating with her calculator. A few days ago, I asked her, "How did you calculate?" And I said, "I actually forget about that formula.、Um, I cannot remember how to calculate anymore." But back then, because she was calculating with her calculator, and then God suddenly spoke to her, "You're calculating. If I tell you, you cannot receive, you cannot receive your pension, and then I return already. Then what would you have? What would happen?" And then she was shocked and scared. I cannot tell God my pension. It's my capital. I offer that to you. That would be useless. So, what would be my faith? When I face Jesus, do I only have my pension? So she decided to quit her job and joined to minister in a church, and then her income lowered many times since she joined the church. So. Today we also need to put God first and not money. Verse seven. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those who have. 
been occupied with them. So it says, learn from those who had great faith and noticed the outcome of their life. Those who shared the gospel with you, the faithful servants, remember them, imitate their faith, because. They were passionate for God. They shared the gospel everywhere from Jerusalem. They did not consider their own life and benefits, but they put God first. So the founders of the church, the elders of faith, you need to imitate them, learn from their faith, and consider the outcome of their conduct. You will notice they're the same from the beginning, when they were young until they were old. They emphasize and focus on sharing the gospel. Imitate them. Some people they started well, but they ended up not well. So we should look at those who remained the same when they were old. They were still keeping the faith. We need to respect them and learn from them and follow them. So the elderly pastors, they are valuable, they are precious, because they have kept their faith. Till today, just like Pastor Joshua, his heart for God has not changed. So we need to learn and follow them. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So. They have the same heart. They keep the same heart. Jesus doesn't change; is eternal, so he would not be like this and then turn to him and become something else another day. Do not follow the servants who are like this one day and then become another thing another day. And do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. Back then, the church faced different teachings. Strange teachings, false teachings, but Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So don't follow those strange doctrines, and just stick to the original gospel, which was shared with with you from the beginning. And we know that Jesus doesn't change, so the gospel also won't change. Will not tell you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yesterday, and today, tell you that worship the angels. That was what the church in he in in the book of Hebrews what they faced. So Christ is greater than Moses and the angels, and He is the greatest mediator. These things will not change. So if someone share with you Jesus is the only way, and then the next day tell you, oh, there's another way, and add something onto this way, you need to worship angels, and there are some mystical、uh, rituals and food laws. No, God doesn't change. Jesus doesn't change. So our hearts need to be. Strengthened, established by this, and Paul especially pointed to foods. This refers to、uh, normal daily eating, but the religious acts and laws concerning food, because the Hebrew Christians they are actually Jews, and they really valued about. What is clean and unclean food, and they pay attention to washing their hands. How they could keep the law concerning food. If you follow me to Israel, you see like a cup, the two handles, in many places. Usually, for a mug, we only have one handle. Why would they have two? Because they use the right hand to take a 
one handle to cleanse the left hand, and then the left hand is cleaned. Is clean, so use the left handle to pour water onto the right hands, so both hands can be cleansed. So they value rituals like that. And Paul said that you cannot profit from these food laws if you cleanse yourself outwardly and pray. But then, what God sees from heaven is your heart is filled with idolatry, greed, and murder. Do you think you're really clean? Can you deceive? The living God. That's what Paul meant. We don't need to focus on the outward rituals. Sometimes the greatest problem of the religious activities is that we do that to show others, to show people, and not to show God. Like the Pharisees, when they fasted, everyone would notice. But when Jesus fasted, no one would notice. He didn't fast for others to see, or even. For his disciples to see, but for Father God to be closer to Father God. Verse ten. We have an order from which those who serve the tabernacle have no right to eat, for the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Therefore, let us go forth to him, outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Therefore, by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. So we need to imitate Jesus. The sacrifices of the animals in the Old Testament. They were burned outside the sanctuary, outside the camp. And Jesus, His blood, can sanctify people, but His body was also brought outside. He suffered outside the gate. All we need to offer real sacrifice to learn from Jesus to offer Himself in spirit and in truth. So we need to learn from Jesus' example. To offer ourselves without blame,、uh, without spots, to God, not just to do outward rituals that try to impress others. Jesus offer a sacrifice of life, and we should do that too, because we hope for. The future city. We hope for eternal no life. Our hope is in future. We offer for for God for the future, and then we can end up in the heavenly city. So those who confess the name of God, we should give thanks to God and offer sacrifice of praise. And verse sixteen, Paul reminds us: apart from offering praise to God, we should also do good and share with others. This is what is pleasing to God. So don't just worship God with our lips. Or without words, and say that oh, it's the New Testament, so I can just offer God thanksgiving. Then our worship is empty and vague.
so we should help others, and we should follow God with our whole being. We should give our tithings willingly. And our actions should match with our lips, and that would be a sacrifice that is pleasing to God. Verse seventeen: Obey those who rule over you, and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that will be unprofitable for you. So we need to remember those who taught us. And let us. We need to follow their teaching because they keep watch for your souls. They must give an account. Those who share the gospel with you, the pastors. So we need to remember them and follow their teaching and guidance because. They have to give an account for us. If they do so with joy and not grief, that will be profitable for us. So don't do anything that our pastors are worried that we'll do, like we、we'll、leave God, we'll not grow up. So we need to let our cell leaders be happy. And, If they see that we grow and follow God more closely, then they're happy, and that's so very simple. The last section, verse eighteen to the end, pray for us, for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things, desiring to live honorably. But I especially urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you the sooner. Paul wanted. To see them face to face soon, and that's what we should keep praying for our pastors, so they have a, they have peace and a smooth path. Verse twenty. Now we now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great Shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you complete in every good work to do His will, working in you what is well pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. So, lastly, Paul said, "May the God of peace, who raised Jesus from death, the great Shepherd." So Paul said, "God is the great Shepherd, the one who." Raised Jesus from death, who cleanses everyone with Jesus' blood. We need to know God as our great shepherd, which means pastoring, discipleship is very, very important. If our God is a great shepherd, so discipleship is very important. We need to have a life of discipleship. The important thing I repeat it three times. So, to disciple others so that everyone can do the will of God. We should do the good work in according to God's eyes. We should follow God like this, and then peace. We have peace, and the glory will be to God. This is a picture God wants. First twenty two, and I appeal to you, brothers, bear with the word of exhortation, for I have written to you in few words. Know that our brother Timothy has been set free, with whom I shall see you if he comes shortly. Greet all those who rule over you, and all the saints, those from Italy, greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen. So Paul greeted the people in the end, and to summarize chapter thirteen, Paul was reminding us we need to have a real and a pure and simple faith with the love of God. That is is what God wants, 
and that we can be pleasing to God, to be His people. Do not pursue some mystical things. Love one another truly and deeply. Follow God, and then God's peace and mercy will be with us. Amen. Now let's give thanks to God. He's the one who's leading us and listening to our cry. He's died for us on the cross, so that because of His blood, we don't need to offer the calves and the lamb. Through Christ's blood, we can go into the inner sanctuary. Through the blood of Christ, we can worship Him in front of God's. Throne of Grace. He's the one who gives us peace. He's a great shepherd. He has been raised up from death. Let's honor him. Lord, we thank you. Through the Book of Hebrews, we know you more. You have made a covenant of peace with your blood, an eternal covenant. Who are we? Thank you for your redemption and your guidance. Lord, we honor you. We praise you. We lift you up. You're worthy of all praise and honor. Today we come to chapter thirteen. We finish reading the whole book of Hebrews. We see that, not like the Old Testament readers, some of them wanted to go back to Judaism. But Jesus has become the best sacrifice, and He's the best High Priest, become the mediator for us. No longer offering the calves and the sheep, as mentioned in the law. It tells us what is the sacrifice that God wants us to offer. Verse sixteen: to do good and to share. God doesn't want religion, but He wants a relationship. Chapter eleven tells us that there's a list of the heroes of faith, and then. Tells us we need to pursue holiness, and here it tells us we need to pursue harmony. We need to do good and to share. And first one tells us we need to have brotherly love and entertain strangers. How do we do good and share? We should not be greedy for wealth. And God, it matches with the Sunday service ser-、uh, message. <coughs> In the past, we celebrated Purim for ourselves. We can turn defeat into victory, but this year Purim tells us that we need to be merciful to others. And today we remind you again that God is not pleased with sacrifice, but He loves mercy. So right now, let's offer what God likes by faith, what is pleasing to Him. How can we not just take care of ourselves? Men, we are selfish. We like to first take care of ourselves. Is that really true? That Hong Kong people prosper because we are selfish. Some people say that. When we are all Hong Kong people, we're in the bondage of selfishness. Let's renew ourselves today with the Word of God. No longer in the world, but in the will of God. Today, the pastor is reminding us that how can we not be greedy for wealth? How can we be content? We put our faith in God. 
The book of Hebrews tells us about faith. Verse five. He says, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." How can we give money and love? We are afraid that we don't have enough. Hong Kong has a spirit of orphans. We always think that we don't have enough, and we do things for ourselves. How can we be free from this core issue? The problem of selfishness. May the Holy Spirit help us now, so we can look upon God by faith. Pastor has shared with us his good testimonies. Just have twenty dollars bills and can live with peace. And how could Simo lay down her good pension because God has said, "I will not leave you nor forsake you." So we can say, "The Lord is my helper; I will not fear." God is my help; I will not fear. I invite you now. What fears do you have in your heart? You think you need some money, and you cannot share love because you cannot even take good care of yourself. May the Holy Spirit help us. We、we'll、fix our eyes on God. He's our great shepherd. And we should pursue the heavenly city. Verse fourteen tells us that we are seeking the city in the future. So, give the Lord our fears and our worries, and tell Him, tell God that you are my great shepherd. You will not leave me or forsake me. You are my help. How?、Uh, why should I be afraid? Well, I should not focus on the economy of the world, which will fall any time. My eyes fix on you. What you have prepared for me is something、uh, in the future. So, Lord, come to those who are seeking you now. To those brothers and sisters online, including myself, strengthen our hearts. We confess that we are selfish. In many years of celebrating Purim, we want our family, our fam, our our lives to be prosperous. We pray for ourselves, but this year you teach us that we should look at others, have a merciful heart. Just like it says here today in the book of Hebrews, we should pursue holiness and pursue harmony to. Keep the brotherly love. To keep the brotherly love. Don't forget to entertain strangers. Remember those who are chained, those who are mistreated. Should not be greedy for wealth, but be content with what we have. Lord, we knew us. Help us to understand your will, just like Jesus, when he came to earth. He want he came to do your will, just Jesus offered his own body to do your will. Lord, help us. Your will. What is pleasing to you is to do good and to share. Let us not be self-centered and selfish. Help us to see others' needs. Remember those who are in chain. Remember those who are suffering. And treat each other with love and pursue holiness. 
respect marriage. Love and respect marriage in love change and renew our mind. It's not religion, Lord. It's not the foot laws. What you want is our hearts, our hearts that love you and others. Be patient to endure. Today, the book of Hebrews tells us we need to go outside the camp to that Jesus endure the. Suffering when there was a great persecution, we may be just be mindful to take care of ourselves only. But you tell us when we see others persecution and suffering, we need to remember and support them and and help them. So we come before you, renew our mind. Take away our fear, so that we can care for others. We can give to others because this love is from you, Lord. Help us connect with you in love, to be filled with your love, and then we can share your love with others. The money you've given us, we can also give to others, share with others, because you are mindful of us. Because you would not leave us or forsake us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, brothers and sisters. I don't know if you have noticed the whole world, the many. Countries who persecuted Christians. There's a website called Open Doors. It updates us with、um, persecution in the whole world. If you want that information, I can send it out. To your lead, your cell leaders. So the most persecuted place include North Korea, Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia,、um, Mali, Iran, Yemen, etc. If the Lord touches you. And you pray and intercede for these countries. He's pleased. So we can intercede for them, especially during these forty days of fasting. We want us to be merciful. We can intercede for them. Because of time reason,、um, I just introduce to you. I give this information to our. Cell leaders, tribe leaders, and then you can pray for these persecuted countries in these forty days of fasting. And the scriptures also tells us that we need to follow those who lead us, so that they will be joyful when we are obedient. So now let's pray for us, yourself. Tell the Lord that I want to make the one who lead me to be happy. That I have a love from my heart to obey them from my heart. It's not like being forced, but to love them from our hearts and to obey them from our hearts. Pray for yourself and pray for your cell leaders. And. The ministry will be light and joyful because we are obedient, 
and we can win more people for the Lord. We believe that we can have on-site worship service soon. So may the Lord give us strength, so that we do not disciple with grief, but everyone can disciple others with great joy according to will of God. So pray for yourself and for your cell leader. Lord, we thank you. We know that you're giving us new crop, the anointing of new, such having new sharp teeth,、um, and so help us to be to do your will and be、uh, that you be pleased with us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter thirteen verse seventeen. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. A very good reminder. We need to remember our pastors, our shepherds, and those who are cell leaders and shepherds. We should watch over, watch out for the souls of our cell members. The end time is coming. The world will be shaken. We need a way to follow. In the end time, we need good and faithful shepherds. In the end time, when it's shaking, a time of turmoil, we need to watch out for our cell members to pray for them. Otherwise, they will be deceived. In the time of turmoil, we need to follow our shepherd closely, so that in the way of heaven, we will not be lost and will not fall out. So let's pray for our hearts. Ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Jesus, come into our hearts so that we can have a bright light inside. We know what is true and false, so we can always align with you, and we can have listening ears in our hearts to listen to the advice of our cell leaders, to listen to the teachings of the shepherds. So that all our days we can follow and be obedient and walk on the heavenly path. May your Holy Spirit fill every cell leader and pastor and shepherd. Help us to know the needs of the flock and give them warning and direction, so that we can all follow you closely to connect with you. Lord, give us such a close relationship because you are a great shepherd. You want us to focus on discipleship and follow you closely, those above and below. Open our eyes so we can hear and remember these teachings and follow you. All the days of our lives. Thank you, Lord. Hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you.